Welcome, everybody, to the Self Mastery Podcast. Today is a special episode. I've got my first guest on the show today, and we're going to introduce him in a moment. For all of you guys that are tuning in for the first time, it's your boy, Osman. I'm tuning in from Liverpool, and his podcast is all about health, happiness, and self-mastery. That's right, mastering thyself. So first guest, what an honor. What an absolute honor it is to have Mr. Auden Allen on the show. Let me just read out his introduction for you guys before we give him the space. Mr. Auden Allen is a creative practitioner whose sole purpose is contributing to the protection, evolution, and growth of young people. Young in age and young in spirit. From music production, poetry, and lyrical performance, Mr. Allen doesn't have any limits when it comes to creativity. Big up, Mr. Allen. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you, brother. It's a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to be here in your presence, in your virtual presence. So thank you as well, man. Yeah, man. I mean, one thing that is uh, it's common today for us to be on a digital platform, right? Mm-hmm. Presence. It's a, it's a bit different to being in person with one another, but I'm not complaining. I'm thankful for this opportunity and I'm looking to dive deep with you today, man, regardless. 100%. The way I always say it, yeah, um, or the way I always see it when I speak to people, I always say that, you know, at the end of the day, the body isn't me. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm a non-physical being using this physical vehicle that I'm in to express myself, to express that non-physical part of myself. So for me as a non-physical being into a physical being, entering into a virtual space, this, I always say it shouldn't feel weird because Mm. you've had your practice. Just by being born, we're doing that anyway. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, I always give thanks to the virtual space Mm. because it, it, it kind of, it kind of shows me how the physical space works. It shows me my connection to that non-physical part of myself, to the physical part of myself, to the virtual part of myself. And, you know, everything is just a repetition of everything. So it's, it's beautiful to not having, I've never met you physically, but we're here. <laughs> and what an it. opportunity, man. What an opportunity we're living in at the moment. Mm. I remember when I was quite, I don't know, I'd say rebellious against the idea of social media and it's normal, you know, when we abuse something, we then start to rebel against it. Yeah. This is just a projection of, of our own, you know, self resentment. Yeah. It's all, we allowed ourselves to get got, you know what I mean? We allowed ourselves to get caught up in whatever cycle it is with phones. They can be so addictive, but they are such an opportunity. Everything is connected. And I was recently listening to a man who channels. I don't know if you're familiar with anyone who channels guides. This is what he calls them, guides. And they were saying something about this digital age that we're living in. And they said to him, if we don't, meaning we as in us, if we don't master this instant transmission of information that we've been blessed with, Mm. it's going to be hard times. It's going to be hard times. Mm -hmm. We've basically got some form of, it's not telepathy, of course, it's not telepathy, but we got instant communication here in a very physical form. And that's something powerful mm. that we can Google information like that, mm. that we've got instant access to this web mm. of information and everything we post, it's there mm. until it's deleted. So you can either see it as a case or you can see it as a gift. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, like I said, I always say to you, like, well, I always say that everything is a repetition of everything, you know, Um, like what I was just saying, we're non-physical beings and 
we're inhabiting a physical space and the same way we can get caught up in our phones and the same way we can we can lose our sense of reality by being on these phones and spending a lot of our attention and time on it is the same way as non-physical beings we can spend too much time identifying with the physical realm which is why things like yoga is good mindfulness meditation because when we do these things sleep when we do these things it allows us to connect to our true nature you know so you know it's the I see technology as the same thing, you know, it's just another extension of who we are and we are limitless beings. We're limitless. So we use this information to store our memories, to store our pictures, store our videos, to give information to each other, to connect with each other. But it's not about becoming overwhelmed or identifying with it as it's not us. It's just an extension, the body mm. extension. And it's just always about using that mindfulness to get back to the source, recharge into the source, and then get back to that physical, virtual, creative, spiritual, mental um, expression. Do you get me? From the deeper place. Of course. From the true place. Yeah, totally. It's like when we're lost in this stuff and when we, when we have lost our sense of reality or gotten it messed up in a way that isn't, aligned with the truth one that is very invested in illusions right the illusion of separation mm -hmm. the illusion of external gratification mm -hmm. right when we get caught up in these and then we come into the world we show up in the world we're going to be operating from a certain place mm -hmm. so totally agree with you man what is what makes it all so much more manageable is to then have those internal practices. The simple ones, man, man said sleep, you know, that's basic, but it's medicinal. Mm -hmm. And when we align with nature, when we align with simple, healthful practices, mm -hmm. then we can, we can show up from a more authentic place, right? Mm -hmm. Authenticity, man, I want to talk about authenticity with you because I've listened to some of your music, man. I'm feeling the vibes, brother. Thank you. I'm on it. Like anyone that's listening, go and check out Mr. Auden Allen. Um, go and check him out. YouTube is the I Am Sacred Drill. This is an album or is this an EP? Oh, it's whatever you want to call it. I just call it a body of music a project it, it's yeah just sound vibrations you know what i mean that come from like i said that source you know not me the source which is me but not just me individually it's the source that we're all connected to you get me totally so, you know yeah, man. um i really enjoy your music man one thing that i like about it especially is that it's positive mm -hmm. very positive in your message but it's aggressive You've got an aggressive, not in all of your tracks, of course, yeah. there's a mix up, but you've got an aggression about you that I, I notice and I acknowledge. And for that to be played hand in hand with a positive message is something that I don't think we're actually seeing that much in music. Tell me what you think about that. Maybe you've, maybe you're aware of some artists that are out there that do this too. Personally, I'm not. But tell us about this positive aggression. Okay, so I come from a, um, I'm 35 years old. So I come from a grime background. And I remember when grime first came out, you know, I really wanted to be a part of hip hop, American hip hop. But, you know, I didn't have the accent and spitting an American hip hop with an English accent at that time. It was cool, but it, it, it didn't represent where I came from. It didn't represent my environment. So when Garage and Grime came out and people started emceeing on it, I felt connected to it. I just felt a connection to a music that represented me and who, and who I am essentially. Um, but at the time it was very, very negative all the words were incredibly negative and to be a part of it 
I had that mindset at that young age that in order to be a part of this genre, you've got to stick to the rules. So as an MC, I started off real negative and I, I, I felt like I was a part <laughs> of the crime family. I was MCing with people, doing ciphers, going to raves on radio stations, going to studio. And I felt like this is really great because being a young person in this environment, I felt like the environment and, you know, politics and the education system failed me. So my anger and my frustration about the system that I was in, it was good to have a mode of expression. Yeah. But I also realized the power of my words and the power of other people's words. And I realized that people were saying certain lyrics on grime that it was actually getting them into real life trouble, real life situations. Mm. People take you by the words you speak, words are spells. So I made a change because I love my mom and I wanted my mom to be proud. So I started changing up my lyrics. Do you know what I mean? First I started talking about race. I, think, I remember I had a lyric, it went, um, black people are in a vital crisis. I have to say that I really hate this, seeing all these racist faces walking around in public places, guilty in their racist cases, tied up minds like shoelaces. I'm only 18 at the time, you get me? So I had all these amazing bars and all these, all the older generation would, would applaud and, and love my bars and tell me how great they were. But when I went back to the MCs to do the ciphers and jump on radio, and I wanted to connect to that grime community, it was a problem because I was a contradiction. Imagine being in a cipher. One man's talking about shanks. One man's talking about guns. Next man's talking about his, his gang. Do you know what I mean? And then I come with this, all these positive lyrics. It was a contradiction to the cipher. So, I, so I, did, I, you, did you spit those bars at the, at the cipher then? Yeah, I or... would. I would. But it wasn't, wasn't accepted. Mm. It wasn't liked. Didn't work. You know, a few people would come to me and say, yo, I love that, respect. But, you know, I wanted to become a part of the crowd. You know what I mean? So I had a real conflict where I had all these negative bars and all these positive bars. Anyway, cut a long story short, I'm 35 now, working in schools. I work with young people, you know, teaching them lyrics, teaching them beats. And this music called Drill comes out. We're all familiar with Drill. And the people that I'm working with and all the older generation turned their backs on drill in the same manner, had bad things to say about drill. Nobody wanted to actually use this as a platform to listen to what young people were saying. It was just condemned, banned from all these places, banned from radio, you know? And obviously there was a massive knife ep epidemic with, that came with drill. Same with grime, do you know what I mean? Um, so my job for the next six years in the schools that I was working with was to get young people to spit positive lyrics on drill. Yeah. For five years, never happened. Because as far as the young people were concerned, just like me and Grime, you can't do that. You can't spit positive lyrics on drill. That doesn't work. I was struggling and struggling and struggling to try and do this, struggling so hard. You know, even nearly lost my job because I didn't understand the terminology of drill and young people were saying all these words that I didn't understand, like ching, which means stabbing, you get me? And I recorded this young person, said, nah, I ain't got no swearing, sir, no negativity. I didn't understand it. He put out this lyric, the teachers heard it. You know, um, they have this automated um, system where you can actually inform without putting your details on. So a young person actually broke down the lyrics and told the teachers. So I had got into trouble for this and drill was banned from the school. So cut a long story short, I was working with this young person and you know, we was talking on Zoom and the young person said, not just to me, but to everyone in the Zoom call, he said, you can't talk about the change. This was in, luck, like in the beginning of luck, lockdown. You can't talk about the change. You have to be the change. And that hit me, you get me? It hit me. I had mm. a lyric or made a tune for so long and it hit me so hard. So in lockdown, when everything locked down, I said, yo, I'm going to get some drill beats. I'm going to get these young people to show me what a good drill is. I'm going to get some drill beats and I'm going to spit positive lyrics on drill in lockdown. And I did it. 
And now, well, funnily enough, the drill community wasn't really accepting of it. But the people that weren't accepting of drill music would come to me and say, yo, I love what you're doing. I don't like drill, but I like the way you do it. And then when I went into the schools and tried to tell the young people, yo, you can spit some positive lyrics on drill. When they turn around and say, yo, you can't do that. I could now show them my album. I could now oh. show them my songs. Because because I decided to be the change, I could show these young people. And now that the young people could see that it was possible and it could still sound good, now more young people in the schools that I'm working with are more open to it. But there was a formula that was very important for this. I wanted to keep the same energy that the young people had created when they had created drill. And aggression is a vital part of it. So that aggression in terms of the sound was important because I know the young people connect to the sound before the words. And then I decided to put positive lyrics using a variation of their flow on the beats and present it to these young people in an a, in a attempt to bring some positive awareness and some positive change so that people could be more aware of what they were speaking and how powerful their words were. Mm. That's a, that is a beautiful story, man. Many things that it brings up for me. That sounds like your hero's journey. That sounds like the hero's journey. Do you know what I'm saying? Because fear is a fundamental component of the path to evolution and growth. You, you have to be afraid of it, of your own potential, because it's risky, because it puts your self-image on the line. Mm. And that is, that's why it's so deep because our self image has oftentimes been rooted in where we were born, the culture that we grew up around or in, and the people that we're closest to that we've got most validation and approval from in our lives. Yep. So when all of that's on the line, that's a real test. And it's no doubt that so many people shy away from the call. One of the, the components to the hero's journey is rejecting the call, mm. is rejecting your potential. Yeah. And pff, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping up finally, but I'll tell you what, I've been on a a real journey against myself. And when I say against myself, I don't mean that. I don't mean to make an enemy of me, but I, I'm warming up to the idea that the opponent is within the opponent. Well, Com competition isn't bad. You know, it's funny, it's funny that you say that. Hold that point. Because I watch a lot of manga. I watch a lot of Marvel, I watch a lot of heroes. And one thing that's common in many of these stories is that either, so Naruto through meditation had to fight himself, had to fight the evil version of himself. Wolverine in the movie, they made a clone of him that was totally evil and totally under the enemy's rule. And he had to fight himself. So a common thing in the hero's journey is actually fighting yourself. You get me? <laughs> carry on, carry on. I, just, I just wanted to interject nicely. Nah, dude, thank you for that, man, because that's it. Like, you know, the truth is oftentimes right under our nose mm. and it's being told to us in metaphor. So it's for those people that, are, that have the eyes that can see between the lines yeah. and the ears that can hear in between the messages, in between the lyrics. What's the message in there? Mm. The, the people that pick up on the bars do you know mm. what I mean with music for many people like you said the youngins it's the beat that gets them first it's the sound that gets them first but, yes. and most of the time the lyrics are going over the head but mm. if that can get them in 
then eventually their ears might open up and pick up on just one bar. Whoa, your words are your spells. And then they might just coincide. They might just think, wait, is that a coincidence? Spelling. Spelling. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they start to see that it's right underneath their nose. Right? It's right underneath. But that's a that's a really good point there, man. The opponent, the truest, most arduous opponent being the self. Well, we're all reflections of each other. You know, everybody you meet and everyone you interact with is just a reflection of your front, your back, your sides, you know, different angles of you. Um, we have this, we have this idea that we're all separate beings instead of separate constituents, separate parts of one being in the same way, all of your separate individual cells make up you. So what I've learned through this theory is that if I'm brave enough to hear my call and literally battle my fear and accept my calling and go against the grain and do what I need to do, even if it doesn't seem normal to other people, and I evolve through that, or I have an, a progression through that, then my progression is your progression and it's everyone's progression. If someone's in a place of distress and pain and you can say something or offer them or facilitate some healing for them, then in reality, you heal yourself. If one of us doesn't make it, none of us make it. Mm. So, you know, I'd come to that realization that everyone's struggle is my struggle. Everyone's success is my success. So what part am I going to play within this oneness, within this one being? What can I do to change everything? Because I do it does change everything. And when you do something, it does change everything. And if more of us had that perception or that mindset, then we could be very mindful about how we contribute to the oneness of this whole universe. My success is everybody's success. Can you go deeper on that, man? Because how does one actually not just understand that with their mind, but really feel it to the point where that is what gets them up in the morning? That is what motivates us that I'm not just doing this for me. I'm not just doing it. Eventually, in my own life, I experienced that doing things just for ourselves. We can use the word selfish. Living a life that is so centered, a me-centered universe, it's, it becomes very miserable. But it's also a great lesson. I have how, how, how would you how would you just going back to that point there, man? My work is every but my success is everybody's. Can you go further into that to, to maybe yeah, help course. somebody that is listening? Who... Well, of course. Well, of course. Um, where would I start with this? Whether we're aware of it or not. Everything that we do, there's a reaction for and there's a response for. If I do something just for me, it affects all of my fractals. It's going to affect my family. It's going to affect my friends. It's going to affect my household. How I greet the bus driver when I get on the bus is going to have an effect on the bus driver. Whether he responds back to me is going to have an effect on me. When I walk on that bus and go up the stairs and I look at everybody downstairs as I walk upstairs, when they see me, my energy is going to have um, an effect on them. And when I finally go upstairs and I sit down, that is also going to have an effect on everybody. And everything that they're doing is also going to have an effect on me. When I walk down the street, I could be feeling very miserable. And when I'm feeling very miserable, I don't necessarily want to feel miserable, but I feel that way. I feel upset, but there's always, you will meet 
along the way so many different reflections and so many opportunities to make a change and choose the path that you want to choose to bring about that change so for example i could be walking around with an angry face i walk down the street i bust the corner i see somebody they smile yeah at that point i have a choice what choice do i have i can either take that positive energy and that smile smile back and decide to use that as a way to transmute my energy into something positive or someone could smile and I could decide to stay on my energy and say what's that person smiling at me for I don't want to feel happy do you get me I'm upset and I can still choose the path to be upset that was an opportunity for me to make a positive change or stay the same or stay on that negative path it was my decision to choose it and the reflection which is me showed me that opportunity you know so depending on what decision I make, whether I want to take that smile and continue to be positive in my day or carry on in my negative way, when I walk up that street and I look at people and I speak to people and I interact with people, the energy I give will also affect them. So what I mean, because I stray a little bit, what I mean by my success is everybody's success is that Any change that I decide to make, because everyone is a reflection of me and I am also a part of everything, everything is everything. All of my affection, affections, all of my actions affect the whole world. If I believe that and I stay on that mindset, then I'll be mindful of my actions then with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> That's whether, what it we're aware, to me. whether we're aware of it or not, it's still the case because we're not separate beings. We're one totally. being. And this thing, man, this doesn't have to be such a mystical concept. It's definitely not. It's logic. It's very rational. The air that I breathe out will eventually reach the lungs of another person, maybe just a few cells, a few molecules. Everything touches. There is no thing that is disconnected. Now, when the mind starts trying to understand this in its detail, well, how can me saying this have an effect on someone on the other side of the world? When the mind is using a paradigm and it's under the illusion of separation, right? Mm -hmm. it, it can't see it. So th there's some things for us to delve into. There's some things for us to... There's more to life than, than what the mind can perceive. Well, of course. Of course. We only have to look at this situation that we're in now. I decided to make Sacred Drill. I decided to use the virtual platform to put it out. I connected with somebody from Liverpool, Gabriella. From connecting to her, I connect with you. Yeah. The music's had a positive impact on you. You doing yoga and putting out a post with the music in the background has also had a positive impact on me because now I'm being heard. And now we're here talking. We've never met physically. We've never even heard each other's voices we've never spoken this is the first time we've spoken yet we're in alignment in terms of concepts we're in alignment in terms of purpose we're spreading this positive message we're giving out information knowledge and wisdom you know so just because you can't see the effect of what you're doing it doesn't mean that it's not having an effect mm. you know and that can be such <laughs> that can give someone such what's the word that I'm looking for will it can give them will it can give them drive because sometimes we think what's the point yes. when we're this is a very depressive thought right when, you, when you're oftentimes when we're, if you've ever experienced the deep depression of your own and I'm sure you probably have in my experience, there's been a lot of these thoughts of what's the point? 
very isolated mentality. Like I am an isolated being. And you know what this is bringing me, man? I heard you speaking on a podcast, mentioning a book called The Gene Keys. Oh. That book, I've got it right up here, actually, on my shelf. That book is insanely powerful. And one thing it touches on in the, the, the ring of life and death, there are some gene keys that where it refers to island mentality mm. being one of the shadow aspects. Island mentality, like I'm separate. And the gift or the city being membrane consciousness solar plexus coming from a, the gut microbiome not the brain mm. so it's really interesting in fact because when we're saying how everything's connected all of this so many different angles that we can take and one of them that we can take is that modern science is starting to refer to and people have for a long time before this the gut microbiome which is the house of trillions of bacteria within your gut mm -hmm. being the second brain. Some people would even go to call it the first brain. Of course. Well, like your third eye. Some people would call it your first eye. Mm, mm. You get me? Yeah, of course. Now that gut microbiome, this is the interesting thing. Mm. According to the numbers, it shows that we are more bacteria, more bacteria than human cells. Mm -hmm. So who are we anyway? When we're talking, oh, my name is Osman. I've got this identity around my body, mm -hmm. my mind, my beliefs, my thoughts. Who even am I if I'm one tenth that and nine tenths bacteria in the gut? What role are they having on my desires? on my thoughts, on mm -hmm. my cravings, mm -hmm. so much. Now, the thing that I'm really trying to get to here is this membrane consciousness, the idea that you are not separated. And from the gut microbiome, we can really see that as a literal example. Mm -hmm. Bacteria are in communication with the immune system. Mm -hmm. If there are any gut issues, it's highly likely that you experience a symptom on the skin, yeah. which is your barrier with the outside world. Yeah. So bringing our awareness more to the gut, understanding more of what we are on a, on a bacterial level, yeah. then, we can, well, then we can start seeing things a little bit differently. And I'll, I'll end what I'm saying with this. I heard a story and it was beautiful. It was a story of creation, yeah. but it was a story of creation that was different to anything I've ever, I've ever heard before. It wasn't talking about space, wasn't talking about God. It was talking about bacteria. And it was saying once upon a time, there was this, this separate bacteria and they were going about their lives and they had their certain requirements to survive. Mm -hmm. They had their needs mm -hmm. and they would go about fulfilling those needs. But in order to do that, they had to compete with one another. Mm. And ultimately, they realized that this wasn't the optimal solution. What they chose to do in the end was say, wait a minute, why don't we create a body out mm. of all of our cells? And that body is going to have certain needs that if we don't work towards fulfilling, we die. Mm -hmm. we die the bacteria die if we don't look after them so we can use this as another as a as a fractal we can say bigger scale mm -hmm. if we can create a purpose that is bigger than ourselves and that purpose call it humanity call it life itself call it peaceful existence Let's say that has requirements, it has needs in order to be fulfilled. Mm. Now, if we've really acknowledged the truth of the matter, not the, it's not, it's not just an idea, the truth of the matter that we are like cells within a larger organism. Mm. 
then we can see that if we don't fulfill this higher mission, yeah, we're done. Mm. And powerful if, motivator, powerful and motivator. And we, and we fulfill that higher mission by also fulfilling our lower mission. And I have this, I have this, just an example. Yeah. You can see this light, right? This is a light on my phone, but it's daytime. You can't see the magnificence of light in the daytime. That's impossible. You will see the magnificence of this light when it's dark. You understand? So all of these, you know, me identities and this selfish nature and just living for yourself and living in your ego and being depressed and feeling low. These are all quite positive things. Sometimes you have to go within your darkness. And when you're in that dark place, that's when you find your light. That's when you can really shine your light. And I feel like yeah. many of us as positive beings, you know, a lot of us preach to the converted and preaching to the converted is like light shining in light. It's not very bright until it's night. You understand what I'm saying? So I feel like when you have a light in you and you've identified your light within yourself, then it's important to shine that light in the darkest of places so that people can find their way. Do you understand? So reaching that membrane consciousness where we realize that we're fractals and we realize that we're connected to everything in order to realize that we are connected, then we must know or we must feel this connection. Huh? In order to feel attachment, then one must be detached. And in order to feel detachment, then one must be attached. Beautiful. It's a dance. It's a dance of opposites. And we have to acknowledge these, these, the dance of opposites and that the sun vibes with the moon and night vibes with the, with, with the daytime and up vibes with down and feeling positive vibes with negative. If you've got an electronic device and you connect it into your, into a plug, then in order for the device to work, there must be an equal flow of positive ele electrons and also negative electrons equally in order for the device to work. Many of us are just trying to flow on one side of the spectrum but we live in a world of duality. It doesn't work like this. And the only way we can find oneness is to find that synchronicity, that synchronization between opposites, opposites and duality. So, you know, it's very important to know that everything is a blessing or a lesson. So you're either going to feel the blessings, you're going to feel elated, you're going to feel happy. But when you feel unhappy about something, when you feel negative about something, when you feel frustrated, when you feel resistance, when you feel darkness, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's an opportunity to evolve. It's an opportunity to learn something. Positive change first breeds resistance. So whenever you want to do something positive, so like say you with your brethren, you all smoke weed, yeah. Everybody smokes weed. We link up in the evening. We play computer games and we smoke weed. Then one day you realize, this isn't helping me. My memory's messed up. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm procrastinating. I'm not fit. I'm fatigued all the time. I never get anything done. I want to make a change. I'm going to stop smoking weed. First thing that's going to happen is you're going to meet resistance. Your brethren's going to be like, they're going to be trying to pass you spliffs. You know, you're going to be feeling like you want to smoke more, even though you've made the decision not to smoke. Positive change first breeds resistance. So when you feel that resistance from making a positive decision, this is the start of positive change. But here's the next part of the saying. Positive change breeds resistance, but consistency breeds success. So when you meet that resistance, if you can make a great effort to be consistent with the positive change that you want to make, even in, even in a process where you're surrounded by resistance, then you will get success. Then you will get success. You plant a seed in the ground, you water it. The seed is surrounded 
in darkness, absolute darkness. The potential of the seed breaks out of the shell. Once it breaks out the shell, it's got to burrow through all of that soil, more darkness. Then it comes above the earth. There's light, but it doesn't end there because then a st stalk has to grow, leaves have to grow. Anything can happen. That plant could die, could be stepped on, could be eaten. Anything can happen. You're still going through darkness to get positive. You grow and you grow and you grow. And over years and years and years and years, you actually grow into a tree. The tree is beautiful, leaves, fruits. It's a beautiful tree. Winter time comes, you lose all your leaves and you lose all your fruits. That's that darkness again. The tree seems dead, lifeless. But then what happens after winter? Spring. Spring happens. So you lost your leaves to get more leaves, to get more fruit, to do more growth. And that process happens every single year. We're no different to the trees. We share a breathing cycle with the trees. We can't live without them. They can't live without us. So when we look at the trees and we look at the process that a tree has to go through every year, which is death and rebirth, then we understand that darkness, coldness, feeling low is a potential for a step towards a greater level of evolution than you've had before. So it's about us. Oh, wow, two birds. Um, it's about us having a different mindset and looking at those things that we perceive as negative, not as bad things, but as opportunities. And even in the resistance and even when it's hard and even when you think like what you said, what's the point? What is the point? You still, you've got that, 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 that idea, that thing in your mind that, you know, what's the lesson? What am I supposed to learn from this? Where is the growth? Where's the evolution? You might not find it at first. It might not be clear at first, but just know there's a bigger plan than your plan. The universe has a bigger plan than your plan. So when your thing is not going according to plan, then it's time for you to surrender to the universe's plan. And when you surrender to the universe's plan, wow, the results are incredible. Mm. Dude, you touched on so many things there. <laughs> As the... I do talk a lot, man, but sometimes I'm just flowing, man. I'm just flowing, bro. <laughs> bro, it's, it's, it's appreciated, man. It's really appreciated. I love this analogy of the seed being planted in darkness. And then when the seed grows and it eventually breaks through the soil, breaks through the ground, it finds the, the light, the air. But as it's growing, it's still growing down. And I didn't even touch on that. Whoa. I know. That's what came as you were talking, bro, because Whoa. I thought you were going to say that. Because you said it's still growing through darkness. And I was like, yeah, it literally is. Because it's as it grows up, its roots grow deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So what I'm thinking is, how is this an analogy for human life and the journey of human life? And what is it that you do with your darkness? How, how do you approach your personal darkness? And I want to make it really clear and obvious for people. When we speak about emotions like sadness, speak about emotions like anger, speak about feelings like jealousy. We all experience these things if we push them away and we, we pretend that they're not there. We don't get the lesson. We don't get to shed our light of awareness onto that and then learn something beautiful from it and receive the gift. So how is it that you deal with challenging, difficult negative, if that's what you want to call it, painful feelings and emotions? Mm. 
this is a challenging question. Take your time, man. I want you to answer it with as much truth and clarity as possible because I think this is a big, big question to ask. There's a lot of young people in the world today, especially young males, who have a, just an unhealthy relationship with their internal world, their emotions. And we do know that. Um, you may need to ask me the question again, but you just touched on something because suicides happen mostly with men between the ages of 25 and 50. Wow. This is why it's important. This is why it's really important to listen to the voice inside. I always try to listen to my intuition. Now, it's funny you was talking about the, um, the second brain, which is the gut. We have lots of brains, you know. We have the mind. This is a brain. Yeah. The mind is just a computer um, that just works things out, figures things out. Do you know what I mean? But I try to not be led by the mind. Yeah. You know, this is what gives me these ideas of these dark emotions like jealousy, like anger like paranoia, like stress, like just unhappiness. These things, the mind tries to define it based on the environment and what the environment expects on us. And I'll touch on that in a minute. This brain here, the heart, yeah, the heart, the place where we feel emotions, the place where that connects us all together, the heart. Then we have the gut, which is your intuition, which is your instinct, you know? And then there's other brains, but we don't need to go into those right now. I find that when I follow the mind, that that can lead me into some very dark places. Why is that? Because in society, there's many expectations or ideas of what a man is and should be. A man needs to be strong. A man needs to not show any weakness. A man needs to not show any vulnerability, you know? Put your emotions to the side, even as a young age, you're a big boy, don't cry. So because the mind figures things out based on the information that comes in, we take all this learning from a young age and we bring it into old age. So when a man does feel sadness, when a man does feel unhappy, when a man feels weak and he feels vulnerable, he feels like there's no platforms in his family for expression, to express these things, or to feel brave enough to do it because society says that you don't. So you think in your mind that you can't and it bubbles up and you suppress it and it bubbles up and you suppress it and it bubbles up until it becomes destructive. So what you're doing by following your mind in this aspect is that you're actually saying no to your heart and what your heart's feeling. And you're saying no to your gut and what your intuition's telling you. Now, the other side of this is that your heart and your intuition never leads you astray. It always has your best interest at heart. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Um, That's an interesting saying. I've never picked every, up on that. Best interests at heart. You know, there are these little sayings that that have been passed to us over the generations or that are just part of the English language and we don't really pay attention to them, but they say deep things. Oh, well, of course, a lot of us don't listen. We say everything is everything, but then when we want to, we, we want to separate ourselves from something, but everything is everything, so how can we? But anyway. Go on, continue, bro. There's an autonomous system in your body 
your subconscious, your super subconscious system. It's, it's the thing that keeps you breathing. It keeps your respiratory system working, your nervous system working, keeps the blood flowing through your body, keeps your brain working. It helps your organism to be functioning as efficient as possible. You fall over and you uh, uh, cut yourself, you know, it heals automatically. You're not doing any of these things consciously. None of breathing does not happen consciously. It mm. happens at a subconscious level. Yeah, you're not choosing all day to inhale and exhale, to inhale and exhale, totally. No, you're not. So that means that there's a part of you that is more intelligent than the conscious part of you. Far more intelligent. Far more intelligent. It's never led you astray. It always heals you. Anytime you went against your intuition, you can never prove your intuition wrong. Even if you go and do something and you go against your intuition, you'll end up being brought back to a point where you was like, oh, I should have just listened to my gut. I should have just listened to that feeling inside, but you didn't because of your mind. And now you paid for it. So I kind of figured out that if in 35 years, the subconscious autonomous part of me has never let me down. It's never been wrong. Sometimes it hasn't fitted in with the norm or the norms of society or what society think that you should be. But when I've gone down that path and just trusted it, it never led me astray. It always <laughs> kept me cool. It it's always funny. kept me alive. It's funny because you say it will never lead you astray. But that's not to say, and especially for the listeners, it's it's that doesn't mean that it's not going to lead you into strange situations that you highly doubt. Oh, of course. Trust is a key component. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You have to trust it because it will, you know, <laughs> you know that saying um, in the Bible that goes, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yeah. When you walk through the valley of the shadow of death with fear, then it's a problem. So, you know, the way I vision that is you walk through this valley of the shadow of death. And then every time you have fear, what happens is it just brings you back to the beginning to walk through it again. And then you have fear and it brings you back to the beginning until you can get yourself to a point where you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and actually have no fear. And mm. exactly what you were saying is to have that trust. Full trust. Yeah. yeah. There's a lesson at the end of it. All of my conflicting situations and all of the difficult parts of my life where I didn't know if I was going to get through and I didn't know if I was going to make it. That's how I learned what not to do and how to make it. It's what they say about business. You can't be a good business person until you failed a few times. You can't ride a bike unless you've dropped off a few times. Just look at a baby trying to walk, the baby stands and it falls, fails, stands and it falls, fails, stands and it falls, fails. We don't concentrate on the failure. Many of us concentrate on that failure, but we're not understanding that every time that baby stands and falls, the muscles in the leg are getting stronger until the baby can actually stand. And then when the baby stands, it takes a step and falls. Then it stands and takes another step and falls. Then it can take two steps. The muscles are getting stronger. The body's getting more intelligent. It's building up more memory until the baby can walk. The problem is, is because of society and the education system and this environment that we're in, this environment is built to show you that if you don't pass your GCSEs or you don't pass this exam or you don't pass this course, then you're a failure. But re in reality, mistakes are that step to evolution, that step totally. to learn. One of the recent invocations I've been using, affirmations, is I am willing to fail. I am ready to fail. Bring it on. Like, let's fail. Because... In my mind, for so long, 
perceived failure is enough to just get me to sabotage the efforts and to just call it quits. Bro, we were, before we even got onto this call, I'm witnessing these thoughts and feelings arising as like, you know, you can see it one way, you can see it another. So one part of my mind is seeing this to be some kind of performance. Uh, another side was then like, wait a minute, man, this is just like a fun conversation with some guy that you'd never met before. Is whatever is going to be what it is. But that internal doubt sometimes <laughs> is enough for us to just say, cancel appointment. Oh no, I'd rather not. I'd rather protect myself from the from the possibility. Yeah. What I find is that stepping into that possibility. It's almost always a surprise. You you'll almost always get a surprise. Because and and I, I say that carefully. I don't mean go into the unknown expecting a surprise. No. What I mean is if you pay attention and you're present, if you're expecting the surprise, you won't be present. And so you'll probably miss it. Yeah. But if you go in with trust and awareness, then wow. Like you've already said multiple things that have had an impact on me in this conversation. It's it's, okay. Give you another story. I remember the first time I performed, man. (laughs) <laughs> I bet that was fire man tell us about it come on so I learned all these things in theatre about projection using your hands you know projecting your voice doing all of this stuff and yeah. I went to this club I got to the club you know passed me the mic and when they passed me the mic I just shouted my lyrics <laughs> just shouting you get me a bottle got thrown at me. A can got thrown at me. Oh my God, it was embarrassing. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I went home. But I really wanted to be a performer, bro. I really wanted to be a great performer. So it was easy for me to be like, forget this, man. I'm never going on stage again. I'm going to let this cripple me. And actually stop my dream of wanting to perform. So what did I do? I sat down and I said, why didn't that go well? I looked at a few MCs on the internet and I was like, I was just shouting. I had the mic close. I was just shouting. I wasn't expressing myself. There was no emotion. I just felt I needed to shout to be heard. So what do you need to do? Reflection. So after you've failed or you've made a mistake the most important thing then is to go inside and reflect on why you failed reflect on what went wrong evaluation you shouted too much try again don't shout you used you was monotone you was on the same tone you didn't use no vocal dexterity you didn't you didn't use any of that you learned that stuff you didn't use the stuff that you learned you didn't use your hands you didn't use the space you didn't learn about my technique that's mm. why you failed so i went back two weeks later the mic wasn't so close this time i smiled i used my hands take note i was in my house in the mirror practicing hard I did all of this new stuff, eye contact. I was learning all these different things in the same crowd. It was the same crowd. Blah, 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 blah. I was now the MC. I could go there every week and do my thing. And I made more mistakes. I made more mistakes. So I realized that, you know, when you fail, yeah, it's about having that reflection and really asking yourself, well, how can I do better next time? And it's so funny you was talking about depression paranoia, anxiety. And the reason why that question you asked me was such a challenge because this year I've done the most shadow work than I've, 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 I've ever, ever done. I, I, I really used to be one of these. And I'm talking as of recently in the first lockdown where I'd be like, yo, I'm on this high vibration 
And if you're not in alignment with my high vibration, you ain't a part of my tribe. You ain't a part of my movement. You're not in alignment with me. Do you get me? And because I had such big energy, this massive energy, I just literally thought that when people were reacting in certain ways to me and acting weird around me, I was like, that's their problem. That's you. But you see all the shadow work that I've gone through recently made me just come back inside of myself and realize maybe the reason why people were like that was because you were just throwing around your energy thinking that, well, this is my energy. This is the energy that the creator gave me and I must express myself. So what was I doing? I wasn't aware of how my energy may affect others who are also a reflection of me. I wasn't aware of how my energy was reflecting on me or the extensions of me. What else did I realize? I realized that I wasn't a very good listener. I spent so much time listening to my own intuition and my own heart that I didn't listen to other people's intuition and other people's hearts that were in alignment with me or in the same environment as me. I realized that I was of a high vibration and I had a lot of knowledge, but I wasn't selfless, I was selfish. And that's why I was getting into problems. I weren't listening. I wasn't realizing that all of my conflicts and the people that I had conflicts with and issues with and problems with was a lesson and a reflection for myself that when I was around people who was reactive, angry, argumentative, I didn't realize that if I'm arguing with them and I'm also angry in my conflicts with them, then that is my reflection. And they're showing me that anger so that I can see it for myself so that I can have an opportunity to make a change. So how was I able to deal with the difficulties of life and the difficulties of my own character? and the difficulties that I've been facing in my own shadow work. That was about me taking those reflections, not just as seeing other people or interacting with other people, but literally I'm looking in the mirror and then decide to make those changes. That if I was too chaotic around people with order, then maybe I could respect their order and bring a little bit of chaos, but also embody that order or also in listen more or, you know, be aware of your energy and how it affects other people. Be aware of other people's energy and how it affects you. So I guess to answer your question, this is mad because I'm thinking about this right now, not like I have the answers. I'm actually processing. That's what I want. That's what I want, man. This is, it's, it's live, bro. This is me processing this information now. You've got to be able to look at the things that are not working in your life and look at the things that are making you unhappy and that are disturbing your peace and are not allowing you to grow and reflect on yourself and your own actions and reflect on what you can do to grow, to reach harmony. I reckon what you're what you're getting at here is interesting, man. It's basically saying that if you're experiencing some emotions that are difficult, use reflection to look at yourself and say, "How am I contributing to this?" Exactly. This is one way that we can go about doing it, right? Be we we can say, uh, "How am how am I creating this?" What it, what is it within my lifestyle that is creating this? Or how can this teach me? And what can I learn from this? Yeah. Because like you said, you just you've do, you've done the most shadow work this year, bro. Big respect to you, man. Cause same year. It since lockdown started. Wow, man. So much shadow work. And for people listening that aren't too aware of, of what shadow work is, it's taking a look at the unconscious parts of yourself that you haven't noticed were there. Yeah. Yeah. So there's parts of ourselves that are affecting the way that we show up in the world. They're affecting the choices that we make. They're, they're affecting the people that we hang 
round with the company that we keep a lot of the kind of subconscious stuff the the foods that we go for the cra- cravings that we have this is a really good invitation to look into to, to go into your own shadow work or if you've got you know um repetitive cycles that go on in your life same thing just keeps popping up or a similar theme like every time I get this opportunity I seem to reject it every time I get into a relationship it just goes crazy every time I you know uh, put myself out there I I end up with with this and we've all got different themes that happen in our lives those are the keys those are the, the real invitations for reflection and to then to do that shadow work and uncomfortable emotions arise when that subconscious stuff is being triggered. You've got to let them, you've got to let them arise. Like you was funny, you was talking about repetitive situations. I feel like the universe, whenever you've got a situation that keeps repeating, that's the universe saying, the reason why this is repeating is because you're not getting the lesson. You need to figure out what that lesson is. And when you figure out what that lesson is, you will then get to the next level where you'll have to learn the next lesson. You see, evolution is not a destination. As soon as you're on the top of one triangle, you're at the bottom of another. And then you get to the, you rise to the top of that triangle, you're at the bottom of another. It never stops. There's no. Yeah, totally. Mm. When you tell me that you're doing your shadow, so much shadow work this year, when I look at you and I speak to you, I, I, I already know that this man has a, a level of awareness that's higher than, you know, uh, not to say better or worse, but it's just reasonably high. And so for you to then say that you, um, you're you still discovering, I mean, obviously, right? It, like you said, evolution is not a destination. It's a journey. Same thing with self-mastery. When people say, why is your podcast called Self Mastery? Why, why is your website called Self Mastery? Because that's what this is. This is the journey of self mastery. Being a student every single day, every single moment. Poof. Every single moment. Um, I read somewhere that we have all these names for all these different types of emotions. Mm. Only two emotions okay there are only two there's a positive emotion and a negative emotion now some people call it a soul some people call it higher self some people call it spirit some people call it higher being infinite being there's so many different names for it in so many cultures but this higher non-physical part of you speaks in a language and that language is emotion emotion is not for us that's how our higher selves speak to us so now let's go back and to that theory of there's only two emotions a positive and a negative emotion i love that emotions can be fitted into that and all negative emotions can be fit into that category yeah totally it's about using it almost like a spiritual gps you put yourself in a situation or an interaction or you know just anything that you're in or anything that you're involved in or interacting with if you're feeling a positive emotion that's spirit saying yes keep going based on the things that you write down in in your manifestations and based on the things that you want in your life, the things that you wanted to manifest and bring about, I'm giving you this positive emotion to tell you that you go into this direction, it's going to help you. But if I give you a negative emotion, that's me as the higher self saying to you, this this is a step backwards. This is not the direction that you want to go in. If you go in this direction, you won't get closer to your higher self or evolving or get close to that, that thing that you wanted. So if we can, what I tend to do is in times of darkness and in times of unsurety, I surrender and listen to the higher part of myself, that part of myself that 
makes my heart beat automatically, that makes my, my, my wounds heal automatically, that allows my respiratory system to work automatically, my nervous system to work automatically. I rely on that and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. Mm. Motion, no. All right, cool. Maybe that's not the way forward. How about if I try this? Oh, positive emotion. All right, I'm going to go in that direction. It doesn't make sense right now. And I might lose a few friends. I might even lose my relationships with my family for a moment. But okay, cool. Let me do that. So what's the next stage? Okay, positive emotion, negative emotion in this interaction. Let me go back and reflect. Um, okay, shall I make this change? Make this change. Oh, positive emotion. All right, cool. I'm going to take a step in that direction. So it's almost understanding your own spiritual GPS, yeah, and simplifying emotions to just being just two and using that as a system to lead you to the greater aspect of yourself. But just know one thing, this path, is challenging, it's not easy, it's difficult, but it's more rewarding. It's like the gym. You go to the gym, look at people in the gym, lifting all these weights, they've got pain on their faces. They're, they're, they're in a state of discomfort. They're, they're putting themselves through literal pain. You hear them, oh, oh, come on, two more shouting at each other. It's not a pleasurable process. The gym is not a pleasurable process, but put your pain through that situation, put yourself through that pain continuously, week after week after week. You see the growth. You see and, the And pain. you experience the pleasure of feeling healthy, of having vitality. So short-term pain, long-term pleasure. Short-term pleasure, oftentimes, long-term pain. And check this. The heart is a muscle. So exercise that muscle. Is that all what you're saying? Breaks, all the relationships that didn't work, all the times you ever felt hurt, all the times you ever felt pain, that is your heart in the gym putting in work. Dude, I love that, man. Don't protect yourself from pain. Nah. Go, go, go through it. One thing, though, man, I want to throw a little spanner. I want to throw a little contradiction into what you were saying there about positive emotion. Let's say I'm imagining a situation, positive emotion. Great, let's go. Let's say I'm imagining the situation, negative emotion. Okay, let's not go there. I want to, I want to throw something in this from a perspective of someone who's experienced addiction on a relatively, I mean, to my own life, deep level, I suffered a lot through addiction to sugar, addiction to weed. And I'm going to be fully raw and honest with you, actually, man. Yeah. I've kept up with, I have so many practices in my life that help me to feel good. You know, yoga, meditation, and I'm just quite a minimal dude anyway. So I'm, I've simplified myself to a level where the touch of the sun is like blissful you know the sound of the birds is just like wow it's like a massage to the ears however however when lockdown started last year i started smoking weed heavily and it wasn't affecting me in a negative way i was enjoying it my emotions towards it were very positive. What I started to experience was this, in fact. I became aware that a positive emotion can be one of the most dangerous things. Because in that cycle of addiction, I'll, I'll give you a, a little story. And this is a really raw and uh, honest exit from a little situ situation in my life. I was sitting with a, a friend in the MMA gym. We were training jujitsu. We'd finished. And I was helping him prepare for a competition with some meditation. He was a bit anxious and stuff. So I was helping him out. It was great, man. We were meditating. I was helping him achieve that inner peace. He was feeling high as a kite on, on nature. 
during this little session with him, I had an imagination of when I go home, I'm going to roll up a joint. And that created such excitement and joy in me. Now, for someone who's in an addictive cycle, it's that positive feeling that is the motivator for you to go and carry on that behavior. Mm-hmm. I'd get all giddy. And I even noticed this when looking at other people. Like people get really giddy when they're about to satisfy a craving, when they're about to feed an addiction. They get really happy, really positive. And I just want to throw that in because in some special cases, a positive emotion in response to a future event can be one of the biggest traps ever same thing with like sugar binging on sugar you get these fantasies of what you get of the situation that you're going to create that's also comfy and set up for you to enjoy this thing at maximal level right and it's a it's very joyous it's a very joyous experience but that's not going to take you towards something wholesome that's not going to take you towards your 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 potential can you relate to that man i believe that it can that's about the awareness what we was talking about before and it's about the reflection um i guess yeah i really like the way that you do that you know man um you've yeah you you really boom 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 you're not like saying oh you experience pain, so that's bad. You're saying, okay, so this can be good. It's go into it, awareness. see what it yeah. teaches you, go in with awareness. Okay, you're all excited, you're all giddy about this thing. Go and okay. smoke it and then have such awareness and see how you feel after. Okay, it's about not turning it into a crutch. It's about it being a lesson. Look, think about sex. Sex is one of the most addictive drugs ever. Do you know what I mean? It feels good. It actually releases good endorphins. It's actually a good form of cardio. It can strengthen your immune system, can make you feel amazing in moderation. Have too much sex. Now you ain't got no energy. You're fatigued. You can't think straight. Your skin has a gray hue to it. You don't feel like doing anything. You got no life force in you. These things are about balance. You see me now, I live plant-based most of my life. But you see when I get a craving, like I was vegan once, strictly vegan. And when I was strictly vegan, I would deny these cravings and deny and suppress them. Then when I decided to, to have some fish, I had fish every single day and I overindulged to the point where I had to go back to being plant-based. And then I realized that, you know what? Destinations are the problem. It's like when you say, I am vegan or I am this or I am that. No, I have quit. Or or, yeah, I have quit. Do you know what I'm saying? So listen, yo, bro, what I'm saying to you is this. Right now, I'm very plant-based. It's a lot of chickpeas, a lot of vegetables, you know what I'm saying? A lot of sea moss, a lot of good things I'm putting into my body. And then when I start to feel good and I'm like, yo, my system feels great, yeah? One day, I might be at my auntie's. She might cook some jerk chicken, yeah? I will enjoy that jerk chicken and it will make me feel good. And I really, really will enjoy it. But because I've lived that life of addiction where I've become addicted to things and I've overindulged. And I'm aware, because I'm aware and that I have that awareness and that reflection. What will happen is, so this actually happened um, a few weeks ago. I actually had um, three or four chicken breasts over a period of like 72 hours, you get me? Went to the gym and I trained. And as I trained, my sweat had this rancid smell. Obviously from the meat, it was disgusting. And I could smell it and I was like, oh, that's disgusting. All right, let me be aware. What is my body telling me? My body's telling me that, yo, that meat that you ate, bro, 
that was a bit too much. You probably need to chill. So I laid it off. I'm done with that. I'm done with that for probably a good four or five months. You understand what I'm saying? I eat vegetables. I've been eating vegetables now for the last three days. Now my sweat smells a little better. I feel more healthier. You know, sometimes I might go on a cleanse. Sometimes I might just have sea moss for four days. Or I might just eat fruit for a couple of days. Just to allow my body that chance to, to rest and reset. Listening what to the feedback. Listening to the feedback from the body and then acting accordingly on that day. Instead of being so rigid to say, this is how it is every single day. This is how it goes. Because... You told, yeah, I, I get what you're saying, man. Um, this is a big topic. This is a big topic that I find myself. It's funny, you know, I find myself in many little uh, controversial positions. The plant based diet is something that's really popular in the yoga world. It's huge. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I lived on a plant based diet for a few years. I developed an intestinal disorder, a, a, a disease within the gut from overeating and eating too much food that wasn't either that either wasn't prepared well or I was just eating simply too much. And the reintroduction of certain animal products helped me so much in the healing process. Exactly. So I experienced my mind was blown then because at that time when I first started the healing journey, I was on a plant-based diet and the research that I was doing was saying, drink raw milk, ferment raw milk, have bone broth, homemade bone broth, ancestral medicine right there. So it was really challenging for me in the beginning. I was very much defined in a certain box. Mm. And I, and funny enough, actually, it was it was very attached to, to my self image as well. It was like, if I can heal this on a plant based or a vegan diet, then just think how people are gonna see me, or they'll see me as that guy, and then they'll all come to me thinking. I mean, like, I thought it was a great business idea. Do you know what I mean? Awesome. If I heal this on a plant based diet, that's a huge audience that are gonna want it. But it wasn't working. And it was like, oh, snap. I'm going to have to like break this doctrine and start, re start introducing this stuff into my body that I was, I was conflicted about doing. And I ended up experiencing amazing results. And that just showed me one. It showed me multiple things. One of them being that there is no one way to live for all of your life. Or for everyone, everybody has is different. It's gonna be different. That's the for second. Everybody, and it's like, like I said, it's about listening to the intelligence of your body, but not getting caught up in your mind too much. Your mind can make your mind is such an intelligent thing, but you need to work with it. You can't. The mind can't be the master. You have to be the master, and the mind the slave. So what I really mean by that is, you know. You know, say, for example, you've got work to do, you know, you've got to meet your family, you've got to um, sort out some business stuff, you know, you've got to prepare for a blog. That's not the time to be smoking weed. It's not the time to be smoking a spliff because you're not going to be thinking straight. For some people, it does help them to actually focus more. But if it doesn't help you focus more, then you're not going to do that. So how are you going to do it? It's about finding that balance. I'm going to get all my work done. I'm going to do everything I need to do. Wednesday, I've got a free day. I don't have to do nothing kind of Wednesday. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go Play into nature, so I'm going to go into nature <laughs> and I'm going to smoke a spliff and I'm just going to chill and relax and acknowledge my own mind, meditate and enjoy the high. Once I've enjoyed the high, I'm going to wake up the following morning, not a smoke, I put it in the box or I put it away in the drawer and focus on what I need to focus on. And when I do focus on what I need to focus on, what herbs are gonna help me to focus? Ginkgo, ginseng, cinnamon, fruits, water. So this is what I'm gonna do. That's sea moss. Yeah. Let's talk sea about moss. sea moss, brother, go on. Uh, Cause I know that you've got some right there. And by the way, what you've just said there, I think is very powerful before we, 
before you share some about the CMOS, I just want to say this awareness. Doing like nothing is good or bad innately. In itself, nothing is good or bad. It's about exposing yourself to things, following your desires with awareness, and then getting a real honest answer of if that thing is saving you, and then making the choice to structure your life in a different way. One thing I I do just want to touch on is, uh, yes, I, I really like what you've said there about like, let's say Monday, Tuesday, you're real busy, you've got so many things to do. And logically, from your experience, you know that if you was to smoke one up, your focus would go down, your energy would go down, you probably wouldn't get the things done, if that's how it happens in your reality. Yeah. On the Wednesday, you're saying, go ahead, but have that intention that this is what it is. This it, it's this it's on this day off. That's what it it's is. This isn't this isn't intentions. Intention. Intention. So you're not following. You're leading. You're you're, you're leading, leading, and then the next day, you've got you've already got your intention. You say yes, and tomorrow, or even tonight, this goes away in the box, and I get back to the grind. Now, for some people, and dude, I'm I'm creating. I mean, I'm in this, I've been in this situation myself. I'm personally finding that if I was to smoke up, like I've applied so much awareness to it now that I just see so many negatives, so many downsides to it. So I'm, I'm taking space from Mary Jane because even if it was on a day off where I haven't got much to do, my sleep quality is not going to be as good that night. Exactly. Do you get me? The beauty of the plant medicine is the plant medicine is there to teach you that. Whenever you have a bad experience with any kind of plant medicine, and we're not just talking plant medicines like marijuana and hallucinogens and all of these things. We're talking about eucalyptus. We're talking about mint. All plants are medicine. The medicine is there to show you a lesson. And it's about listening to that lesson. You know, I've... I do not smoke now, but I have had many experiences with Mary Jane. Do you understand? And it's about listening. Because, you know, I've had times where I have literally smoked and it's been cool and it's been blessed and I'm chilling with my homies. And then one day I smoke and then I'm like, this doesn't feel the same. The high don't feel the same no more. In fact, I'm not happy right now. Like... Look, all these things I need to do. I'm having problems with my relationship. I'm having problems with my family. The Mary Jane is giving you that lesson right there and then. So when that happens, if you don't listen to that lesson, then you're going to pay for it. Mm. And the thing is, is about some of these substances, they have an addictive, strong nature. And so, yeah, if you've got to learn a hard lesson from them, you'll learn a hard lesson from them. Put it that way. Everything is a reflection or a fractal of you. Everything's a ref- like everything's a reflection of you and your experience. It's not the Mary Jane that's addictive. It's not the tobacco that's addictive. It's you that has the addiction issue. So for me, like I've had that level of awareness where I'm like, well, what am I trying to hide from? What am I trying yeah. to? Suppress? What am I trying to run away from? In it, it's like what am I trying to? What am I trying to block away? Yeah. And then, you know, lockdown allowed me to find that strength to actually admit it and acknowledge it. So for me, Mary Jane was communication problems. Mm. I really have a big issue with communication. I can be very social, socially awkward. So if I'm high, there's my excuse. There's my justification for being socially awkward. So now I'm going to allow that and I'm going to learn how to communicate better. Wow, I'm going to dude. learn how to listen better. I'm going to learn how to place myself in social situations that I find myself anxious in and do something different. And open this is, th- to this is making me think, man, thank you for that, bro. This is making me think, yeah, like what is it that, that, that it's actually done for me? Yeah. It used to be something that I would do for social, 
you know, because it would make me more funny. <laughs> you know, I'd be just like, I guess, more authentic. Being fully, I, I'm a. I was just. It wasn't the weed that was making me funny. I'm a funny guy, but I was just not telling all the jokes because of the the internal blockage or the fear of rejection or, you know. So for some people, it can make you a bit fearless, and. I think I experienced that personally and I really loved that. And that was where the addiction began. It was like, wow, I got some relief from this, uh, this, this prison that I, I'm so used to being in within my own mind. Exactly. So the mind, so that's why the mind is clever because you smoked that weed you found yourself releasing that funniness that was already inside of you. The Mary Jane was like, you've got this inside of you. I'm showing it to you. I need to go and charge. I'm going to get my charger. Do it, my, bro. Yeah, yeah, one second. Do it. And then also, I am going to show you the CMOS in a minute. But before I show you the CMOS, I'm actually going to go into the kitchen and I'm going to wash my hands thoroughly because, you know, I've had a little bit of hay fever. My hands are not clean. So I just want to say that as a disclaimer so that when I pull out the CMOS, y'all know that my hands are clean. All right. All right. Cool. One second. Much love to Mr. Orden Allen. Let's just give him a moment to get the CMOS and... Also remember that we don't need to fill every gap of silence. So just take a break and take a nice deep breath. And exhale. All right, so I'm gonna connect my charger first and then I'm gonna go and wash my hands, okay? Yes. Okay. Because I've got, you know, cleanliness is healthiness. So it's really important that when I'm handling products for people that, you know, my hands are clean. It's such an important thing. So we're going to do this first. Connect the generator to the Mac. So we have power, which is brilliant. Now I'm going to go wash my hands. I really love silence. It can be such a an opportunity to just reset. Okay. Talk to us about the sea moss, brother. Okay, cool. So I've set up a business. It's called Alan Seamus. Um, I've been hearing about Seamus so much and I'm in a beautiful relationship with this beautiful woman. And, um, you know, I decided that I was going to try Seamus. I heard so much amazing things about it. I heard that the body um, needs about between 110 and 114 essential nutrients and that Seamus actually had 92 of them. And it was good for the mind, it was good for the gut, it was good for the reproductive and sexual organs, it was good for focus, it was good for the skin, it was good for the hair, you could take it in the body, you could put it in your hair, you could put it on your skin, you could put it on your wounds, it helps hay fever, I heard so much amazing things about it so I decided to try it, and it was just a trial and error process, um, the first um, place of knowledge was to use boiling water on it. And um, by using the boiling water and then blending it, um, I realized or I heard from another knowledge base that that actually um, kills the nutrients. Um, I was using tap water. This is just me and my own personal process. Then I heard that tap water is not good. Mineral water is not good. I need to use spring water. So I started to use spring water, but it was still quite hot. And then I heard of a technique where you know, you can use cold water. So me and um, the wife, we went through this whole trial and error process. And then she made it one day um, with cold mountain water, <laughs> mountain water. She soaked it overnight for 12 hours. She blended it and she just came up with this amazing texture. 
Um, so we tried it, you know, we put it in our system. And for the first time, I really started to feel the benefits. I felt this energy. I felt more focus and concentration. Skin was looking good. Hair was growing fast. And I was like, this is amazing. And you know me, I'm on, I'm on social media. So I started to, you know, share this process with the people on my social media. And people were asking more and more about it. So I started off selling the dry sea moss at first. Um, so this is um, pure St. Lucian golden sea moss. Very, very clean. Very good. Very, very pure. And people were buying bags of it. You know, I, you know, lockdown was a hard situation. A lot of the workplaces closed down. I was really interested in starting my own business. And I called it Moorish Moss. It was working. It was fine. So then I started to make the gel. Um, we made a really great gel. You know, we put it on the internet, put it on Instagram, we put it on Etsy. And, you know, I'm really all about presentation. I think presentation is very important. Um, we presented it, we made a logo, we presented it, we made it look nice. It felt nice. It had all the benefits. We wanted to educate people on it. And more and more people started to buy it. Um, so yeah, we sold the CMOS jars. We are selling the CMOS jars. They're doing really, really well. And as of recently, mango. That's the mango yeah. one, right? Yeah, this is the mango one. Oh, oh, this filter's not really helping. It's not. <laughs> there right, we here. go. Here we go. So we've got Alan's mango sea moss. So beautiful. beautiful. Right. I'm still yet to try it, man. I'd love to get myself a, a jar and actually try some because I have heard about the benefits of CMOS. I haven't tried it to have the experience myself. Yeah. So I would really like you to. You make it very high concentration. A lot of CMOS is quite runny. Um, but we make it high concentration. So if you look here, well, it's not going anywhere, you know. Mm. Very high concentration, very thick. Um, you can eat it straight. Um, you can put it in your porridges. You can mix it with your smoothies. You know, you can use it to thicken your soups. It's such a great, amazing product. Um, but the thing that's most important about our process is we make sure that it's clean. We really clean it. A lot of sea moss can taste like the sea, can have a very fishy taste and a very weird texture. We clean it and we use mountain water to clean it. We don't put no tap water on it. We constantly use mountain water to clean it and we blend it with mountain water and we make sure it's at the right texture. We put it in the jar, we leave it in the fridge. Um, and yeah, um, it lasts for about four weeks to five weeks and it's just, just great for everything. So it feels good to be on this health journey myself with it and also to be able to share it with people and also to receive an abundance of financial wealth, educational wealth, and just health in myself kind of wealth. Um, it's one of the, I feel like it's one of the most incredible things that I've done. I'm so proud of, I'm so proud of me and the wife for actually making this happen and working together on this and it being a success. That's beautiful, man. No, it's, a, it's great to, to hear about that and blessings for the future of Alan Seamus, the, the business. Um, perhaps, and this is completely um, unplanned, but perhaps you'd like to offer a small discount to anyone that's listening in now. They can, and they can then contact you and, and place an order and get a little discount. 100%. Um, just shout me a hundred percent discount, <laughs> not a hundred percent discount. But if anyone <laughs> watch the show and um, you know, comes and hollers at me, we'll see what we can definitely do. Um, we also have pure Ayurvedic frankincense oil as well, um, which is also homemade. Um, the wife and her family, uh, they're very good at making oils. They have a very clean distillation process. This is Ayurvedic Boswellia serrata, artisan alembic copper steam distillation, 100% pure frankincense oil. This is an amazing oil. 
You can put one drop in some water and drink it, clean out your gut. You can mix it with a carrier oil like almond oil or um, coconut oil, really good for the skin, good for joint pains. Um, you can put it on your hands. You literally can just put it in your hands, smell it. Mm. It gives you a sense of calm. You got a headache, you can rub it on your temples. You can put it on your bath. It has so much properties. They call frankincense oil the king of oils. Um, we have an Etsy and you can get the products. The main aim is we set up a business. It's called Alan's Health Store. And the main aim is to be almost like a Hollands and Barrett's, but quite different, educating people on products letting them know what the products can do for you, how you can use the products and have offering products that people are maybe not aware of that can really, really help them to elevate their well-being. you know? So this is my dream. My dream is to be that bigger than Highlands and Barrett's and, mm. you know, just, you know, health is wealth. I love it, man. I, I love it. To be wealthy and abundant you know i've heard great things about boswell yeah frankincense oil is this a food grade oil that can 100 definitely go into the body so um in terms of putting it into the body you only want to put like one or two drops in a, um in a glass of water okay uh, one or two drops and it's not an everyday thing it's just something you do like maybe once a week or so, um, because too much of it can be toxic. Um, so you just, you might be feeling a bit of, you might be feeling bloated, you know, you might be feeling a bit of stomach pain. At this point is when you would use it and then you'd find yourself going to the toilet quite fast, actually. Interesting. Uh, yeah. It's a whole science in itself, isn't it? The application of essential oils. Yeah. One thing I did here is that you can apply if, if you was using it for the gut, because you mentioned uh, cleansing the gut, you can apply it topically to the abdomen, maybe mixed with a carrier oil, like you said, almond or coconut oil, and then that'll diffuse through, through the skin, right? Yeah, that's when they talk about um, the three wise men bringing the gifts to um, Mary, they bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The frankincense was for the mother, it was for Mary and her child pain the child birthing pains, you get me? Um, so it, she would have received that in liquid form and it would have been rubbed on her stomach, you mm -hmm. know, um, to, to alleviate the pain she was going through in birth. Um, so, yeah. I'm definitely interested. If, yeah, if anyone listening wants to hit up Alan, I'll put the Instagram handle or, or something on the screen here, but, how can people contact you best? And if you do contact them about the CMOS or any of the products, just let them know that you listen to the Self Mastery podcast and that you heard this episode, and then we'll see what my guy can do for you. 100%, just literally, the links will be down there. So I'll give you the link to my shop, my Etsy shop, um, so you can order, and also the link to my Instagram. Instagram is the best way to contact me if you have any worries or any uh, you want any information. We're all about education. You know, I don't feel like you can, it's not a good idea to sell health products without educating people. And that's something that's more important. Two things that are important to us, making very clean products. And number two, educating the people. Mm, quality and, and awareness. <clears throat> So what, what is your Instagram handle? Sorry, um, because on the, if people are listening in to audio only, they won't be able to see anything that's on the screen. So, um, Instagram handle is um, for the health store. It's Alan's Health Store. That's A-L-L-E-N-S um, Health Store. Um, okay. I'll send you the, the, um, the images so you, know, you can just pull them up if you need to. And then um, my Instagram handle is Mr. Auden Allen. Um, and he don't play with words. <laughs> he don't play with words. Jeez. Yeah, man. <laughs> that, that was the first lyric I heard of yours. Right, get on, Mr. Auden Allen. Yeah, one of the first lyrics I heard from yours, it was like, 
Right, hello, I'm Mr. Allen, and I don't play with words. Fractal of the universe, I'm all about nature. I vibe with the bees and birds. Shaman, warrior, totem, wolf. Ain't got time for the sheep in herds. Highly protected by my ancestors, can't harm me with a spell or curse. Birds of a feather flock together. Eagles fly alone. I'm in a lane of my own. King in my kingdom, can't sit in my throne. Deep meditation, showering monk in the Himalayan mountains, I'm in my zone. When you hear um, it's an intergalactic, infinite flow coming out of the tone. I'm like Super Saiyan Goku. When I get up in my meds, Kame, Kame. Man, don't push me over the edge. Absorb spiritual energy. Spirit bomb hangs over my head. Freezer, he tried to destroy the world. Attempted mass murder, ended up dead. Life after death, death after life with an infinity stone in my third eye. Like when Stark took Jarvis and his synthetic cold and gave vision new life. I got a bag full of crystal stones. Let me see if I must get his hands on those. Call me a righteous Akuma. Hatsatsukun, I got the Hadouken flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man are there any final words that you would like to share with the world I, i'm really curious as to in fact it's funny i didn't ask any of the questions that i'd written down because we were just so in the flow so why don't i ask these five questions now okay and try and answer them in as few words as possible mm-hmm so question one is, if there was a change that you could have instantly take place tomorrow in the world, what would it be? For us to actively be of one mind, for us to actually do something to actively be of one mind, you know, mm. the idea that the whole world, the idea of the whole world doing the same thing, or saying the same thing just for one moment is just is epic for me. That's epic. Wow, Very maybe. Epic. And you know, like you know, like when you know, like um, on Remembrance Day, when people have a moment of silence, and how powerful that is, just in a room full of people. Imagine that with every single person on the globe, if everyone in the world at the same time just had a minute of silence how beautiful that would be Dude, let's let's see if we can maybe put our forces together and create a, a a large scale silence or a large scale meditation i know people do um you know like worldwide meditations but it's never hit me the way that it's just hit me now you saying it everyone even doing the same thing everybody in the whole world just shouted at the same time it would yeah be just- it would be amazing wouldn't it just like that yeah. unified that would be crazy <laughs> next question if you could give your 18 to 19 year old self 18 20 year old self um if you could say one thing to them what would it be don't doubt yourself don't doubt your uniqueness like everybody's made in their own unique way there's only one of you. So if there's only one of you, then nobody can do the real you better than the real you. Mm. So just be the real you. Fire, fire. What wise words from another person stick with you the most? Words are dead. It's the energy behind them that give them meaning. I'm going to have to just take a second to take that in. It's the energy of your words that matter. Jeez. You only have to look at young people. Young people get negative words and transmute them into positive words. Yeah. Yo, bad. That is so wicked. I'm so gassed. Yo, that's <laughs> crazy. So, you know. <laughs> they're alchemists man they just, they just transmute that stuff don't they mm. final question what are some final words if you was to share for the listeners out there and the future generation hmm There's 360 degrees in the universe, but you only get one in university. So be a student of life. I love the way you said that, man. 
I, I, yeah, just thank you, honestly, bro. Thank um, you for providing the space because, you know, not always does things just come flowing out, but today it's just flowing so nicely, man. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's been a vibe. It's been a really good time, man. I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate this conversation, and I'd love to get you on the show again at another date, man. Amazing. Let's do it, man. Have a blessed time. Go and check out Alan's Health Store on Etsy or on Instagram. Get in touch with him if you're interested in the CMOS finest quality, cleanest, most hygienic, beautifully prepared, thick consistency CMOS mango edition is now out too and the essential oils also.